I've never seen one of these before. I'm in Yankton, South Dakota, and the property I'm standing on shows up on an 1890s map. There was also an 1870s map that shows buildings in this vicinity. I got permission to excavate the backyard in search of artifacts left over, so I'll take a walk around back and see what we can find. I believe this house has a lot of the original woodwork, and you'll notice the angle of the roof. I believe that's called a Mansford style roof. We excavated some sites back here, and I have reason to believe that a saloon may have stood on this property. I have a pit probed out just past that garage. I'm really excited about this. You hear that? That's likely some glass. That crunchiness is stove ashes. I noticed there's some color change down there. So this is definitely worth digging. down a couple of feet and I ran into a few pieces here. Looks like some paneled bottles. Uh, so this one's got a tooled top. No embossing on it though. This one looks familiar. There we go. Okay. Chaz. Chaz H. Fletcher's Castoria. That's early machine made. You can see one panel has Castoria. The other is uh, Chaz H. Fletcher's signature. It was a castor oil bottle. Makes sense uh, if this is an outhouse pit, why this would be here. It looks like some kind of porcelain dinnerware piece. Oh, cool. Nice floral pattern. And a... Uh, Check for a stamping on it. Haviland. Yeah, this is a popular high end dinnerware uh, set back in the day. I find them all across the Midwest. We're getting into some kind of use layer. I saw some uh, lime and a few undigested seeds. Some pieces are showing here as well. It's kind of ink. What is this? Lonergan's? Lonergan's? Patented Oilers, Philadelphia. I've never dug one of these before. It's got a ground lip on it. I don't know if it's screwed into something or just held oil for something. Looks like a little ink bottle. Sometimes these are embossed. Uh, might actually have some black ink or black ink in it. It's a tooled top. This thing's been in the way. What is that? Oh yeah, you can see some undigested seeds in there. Looks like the top is some kind of dinner dinnerware piece. It's got a hole in the bottom, some kind of decorative design. Interesting. Looks like the lid to a child's tea set. Some kind of semi-porcelain piece. Oh, okay, here's the base. Here we go. Must have been a, some kind of candy dish or something. That's kind of cool. Both pieces are there.
Oh, this is older. Uh, Warranted Stone China, Meller Taylor and Company, England. It's got the stamp, it's just a plain white wear piece otherwise. Broken canning jar. This pit has some good age. That's a salt glazed egg beater crock. A solid use layer, there's all kinds of stuff down here. Some heavier glass pieces as well, some really thick glass. I'm having trouble getting this out. Have to dig around it. Oh, some kind of a drinking glass, like a footed goblet. That one's got a really cool pattern on it though. It looks like some fruit and some leaves. this thing. Wow. That's not cut glass, but that is some major piece there. Maybe like a punch bowl or something. Machine made of some sort. And some stonework crock pieces. Another three-piece mold English ale with an applied top. And another. Acme Blacking, trademark. Wolf in Randolph, Philadelphia. That's a shoe polish, I believe. I can't even get my trowel through. There's so much stuff packed in here. Some more pressed glass pieces. Whoa! That's wild! Look at that! What is that? Got some kind of like angel on it. Whoa! Maybe a perfume bottle or an oil lamp base? That's insane. It's got a tooled top. We're down into a solid use layer. You can see the soil color changed. That's leftover remains from an outhouse. And here's a few pieces that were thrown down. Looks like some kind of drinking glass or jelly jar. And yeah, the shoulder's blown out, but this is a turn mold English ale bottle. You know what, a three piece mold. Some kind of figurine. Look at that. That's a. Uh, looks like it held on to something. Could have been a, a novelty cup of some sort. That's semi porcelain, I believe. And an ornate handle. It's got a possibly some 24 karat gold leaf on it. You can see it shine there. This has been sticking out, it's broken, but that's an unusual pattern. Yeah, some kind of uh, cup for a tea set of some sort, I believe. Uh, continuing across with my test hole, still solid use layers. Got a bottle here, another one here. Uh, this one's paneled. It's like just an unembossed extract bottle. 
This looks like a prescription bottle. Philadelphia Oval Style. Uh, McCulley Glass Company mark. No other embossing. And there's just stuff all over in here. Solid use layer. Ironstone China Plate, Porcelain Royale, W and F, something England, and it says Columbia. It's just a plain whiteware piece, but it's a really faint stamp on this. Another blacking bottle, partial label, but you can't read it. Another one of those Acme blackings, tooled top. J and G Meek in Hanley, England. It's one of the most common stamps I find on these whiteware pieces. We're down about four feet, and the pit continues underneath this garage. And I solved the mystery as to what was stamped on that other plate. This one has a better stamping. It's W and E Corn, Porcelain Royale, Columbia, England. And down below here, I've got some pieces on the way out. Uh, first one I uncovered was a looks like a mason jar really old mason jar here it is it's, okay it's broken these are usually broken but uh yeah this is an original mason's patent november 30th 1858 it's got that cross on there that's actually called the hero cross it's from the hero glass works this is definitely 1870s 1880s right in there Two more bottles. Get some of this stuff out. Okay, this has some pattern on it. This might be a transferware piece. C. Hatsworth, England. See a partial stamp there. It's got a rope design, and then some leaves on the other side. That brown color. I find a lot of this pattern here in Yankton. Okay, a uh, shoe fly style liquor flask full of ground water. It's a uh, 1890s, I suppose. Whoa, the Oakley Soap and Perfumery Company, New York. It's got a tooled top. Almost like a hawk wine style. I've never seen one of these before. There's the embossing. It's uh, it looks like a beer bottle, almost like a wee beer or something. But it's from a perfumery company. That's very unusual. Continuing into the use layer, no end in sight. Ah, some little square bottle. Oh, another Acme blacking. This from a popular product in the house. Solid artifacts down here. Broken windows. Another little drinking glass. All right. Oh, this one's almost intact. Patented November 26, 1867, 
I believe that's John Landis Mason's patent. He invented the mason jar. This one's also got the hero cross on it. This one's really faintly embossed. It's hard to see, but it's right there. That's the mark of the hero glassworks. Oh, I think that's the globe top to a lamp. A little kerosene lamp or something. That's ornate, that's kind of cool. See all these specks? These are undigested seeds from the outhouse, mainly raspberry and tomato, is what I've found. Here's a little unembossed drugstore bottle, a Philadelphia oval style, tooled top. Underneath it here, there's this big ironstone piece. I'm gonna try pulling it up. It's uh, kind of stuck in, maybe some pieces will come up with it. Wow, that's an oldie there. Got an A stamped into it. I think it's a butter churn. That's a really old one. I mean, could that be 1860s maybe? You see the letter A stamped in it right there. And it's a kind of typical salt glazed piece. So there's so much stuff down here. I can't even get my trowel through the ground. Just glassware everywhere falling out. Some kind of studded a bowl of some sort, some kind of decorative piece. Philadelphia Oval drugstore bottle, no embossing on it. That's unusual. It's got a ground lip, some kind of decorative glass. I have no idea what the contents were. pharmaceutical bottle of some sort. Looks like a three-piece mold, tool top. <laughs> Whoa, this would have been something. I think it was, okay, yeah, like a German water bottle. These are found in early sites across the Dakotas. figurine. Goodwin Brothers. It's an English made ironstone whiteware, possible chamber pot or water pitcher bottom. Unembossed extract. Possibly a blacking bottle, shoe polish of some sort, no embossing though. Okay, little uh, mustard bottle, it's a tooled top. Uh, Dr. S. Pitcher's Castoria, another one of those castor oil medicines, it's a tooled top on this one. No embossing on any of these. Uh, F and F Company, another drugstore bottle. Another little embossed drugstore bottle, Philadelphia Oval style, I believe. some kind of ground lip bottle. It's got a 
basket weave pattern on it. it could have been an ink or something. Oh, and I cleared away the dirt from that butter churn. I saw all this here and some soft ground, unembossed square bottle. I'm amazed at how much stuff is in this pit. Yeah, this is kind of in the way. Oh, there's another bottle underneath it. Another one of those W and E corns. You can see the stamp on there, it's just a plain white wear piece. I have some embossing. Uh, Boston. Okay, Burnett's Standard Flavoring Extracts. This was a popular product back around the turn of the century. Looks like maybe a couple English ales. Some more of those three-piece green glass. This actually might be something different. Uh, okay, yeah. These are typical of an 1880s, 90s pit. Uh, JSP whiskey, that's a JSP monogram on there. I believe that's the initials of the guy who imported these. Could have been a malt extract. A Meller Taylor and Company. It's a nice stamp. like uh, a just ironstone china, some ironstone china stamp on the bottom and uh, some floral pattern on the side. Okay, Lion Manufacturing Company, New York. Uh, Mexican Mustang liniment tooled top. Another unembossed Philadelphia oval style drugstore bottle. H. Alcock and Company, England. Some more ironstone whiteware. It could be some kind of toiletry bottle. Broken top. Wow, I'm amazed at how much stuff is in here. Their ironstone china, English whiteware piece, some kind of bowl of some sort. I'm down about five feet and we found bottom. There's a corner right here I've been cleaning out. That looks like a couple drinking glasses, maybe jelly tumblers. This stuff all over in here. That's a really cool color. I love that these are almost always clear, so anytime I get a different color, it's interesting. It's cool pink. It looks like a, a drinking glass, maybe a jelly tumbler of some sort.
Oh wow, okay, it's a broken marble. That's a beautiful German swirl. It's actually broken in half. That's really cool. Top's knocked off. Some kind of utility chemical bottle though. Would have had a tooled top. Oh, that little L.H. Thomas ink bottle, tooled top. Those are the, these are the smallest sizes they made, I believe. Tooled top prescription bottle. And another, this one's a Philadelphia oval style made by the McCulley Glassworks. broken blob top soda bottle. That's from the 1870s. That predates everything in this pit. Oh, still working my way across the side of the pit here. Looks like a little uh, ink bottle, maybe mucilage. It's a tooled top. Uh, broken drugstore bottle. Oh well, okay. Pickle bottle, pickled goods container. Could it contain relish or uh, pickles, preserves of some sort? I found this clay marble. Looks like it could be a shooter marble. A cool piece. We've nearly finished this pit. We found all four walls. And just cleaning out this last area. Now there's definitely some pieces left in here, though. Looks like a ink bottle. No embossing. Tool top. Okay, another shoe polish. Whitmore from Boston, also a tooled top. Huh, a little, uh, I think they call these a hand lamp. The handle broke, so they must have thrown it. I don't know, I've been going out to the outhouse with it probably. Billings Clap and Company, Boston. It's a key mold bottom. That's an old medicine. Could have been some kind of cod liver oil or something. There's the edge. Another tooled top ink bottle. We're on the final corner. There's like a couple extract bottles. We have left here uh, Dr. Price's delicious flavoring extract. And Dr. S. Pitcher's Castoria. This pit is done. The pits all finished up was roughly six feet deep, four feet wide, three feet long. Here's the hall. Everything was typical of a residence and dated back to the 1890s. Got some English ale bottles, some drugstore bottles, condiments, a couple liquor flasks, some odds and ends, those medicines inks, blackings, that amber bottle from New York, and some extracts. This was a good dig though. We'll get it filled back in.